Make your own way as for creative people who have the courage and the determination to live and work on their own terms. All right, my guest today is Jeff Finlan, good friend of mine, and uh, one of these creative dudes that's just prolific. Prolific. <laughs> is that an insult? <laughs> Only in certain cultures. <laughs> <laughs> but it's nice to have you here. And um, we've been testing the ropes as far as all this technology is concerned. And I think we found a, a workable solution to our dilemma. We've decided we're moving to Mexico to rent surfboards and make tacos. <laughs> yes. And we've both become fans of Zoom instantly. Yeah. <laughs> and those tacos sound good, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, Jeff, I didn't tell you this, but uh, this is actually the premiere episode of a new video series that I'm going to do, and it has to do with a workshop that we did together earlier in 2016 mm -hmm. called Making Your Own Way. Right. I've shorted the making to make, and basically, make, make your own way. This is episode number one. Mm -hmm. You're the first guest. That's not new for me. I'm the first of everything, you know. I've been, I've had I've had like three or four like like major label record deals or subsidiary record deals, and they go, "Guess what? You're going to be the first artist on our label." Oh, great! That's fantastic. So I'm your guinea pig, in other in other words. Well, in other words, you know, um, you've been my guinea pig, guinea pig before. You'll be my guinea pig again. I love, I'm loving it. <laughs> we'll just stop this right here and move on. <laughs> <laughs> well, the biggest reason that uh, you were my inspiration on this is I've wanted to do something like this for a while now. Um, and basically, it's just for people who are kind of, they're, they're all creative, but they also are interested in creating their own life path. And... Um, so the show is going to be primarily about people who are, you know, making things happen and creating really interesting things. And you right. are someone that I know that does that all the time. And um, to start things off with, I'd like to talk about 2016 just as a year, because in that year, you released a, a new record, mm -hmm. a book of poetry. Yeah. You created a yoga program for people in recovery. Yeah. You wrote a book, 365 Days of Recovery Yoga. Right. What did I miss? There's got to be one other thing in there. I, I, built, well, I built a website. And, that's right. Uh, I wrote, I wrote 50,000 words on, an, on a, another book, which hasn't come out yet. So um, what else? I toured. I spent, um, spent um, what? Um, a month and a month and a half touring in the middle of that too. Yeah. So, well, in the midst of the touring, you, you recorded a whole other album. Yeah. I rebuilt a carburetor. <laughs> <laughs> Painted a few houses. Uh, yeah. Walked the dog, you know, <laughs> a lot, you know? <laughs> so, yeah. so in any case, the, the first question that comes to my mind is, how do you, how do you get from beginning to end? Um, it, it it just feels like that there's an efficiency to what you do that a lot of creative people don't enjoy. <laughs> yeah, and um, you have the ability to just sit down and 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 say, "I am going to do this," and then you get it done. And has that been something that's been a characteristic of yours throughout your life, or is that something that you've developed as you've gone? Well. I think I've de it's developed in certain in uh, certain ways over the years. When I first started, it was the result of a great insecurity, <laughs> okay, and in and feeling of being less than and and self loathing that you know <laughs> <laughs> that transcends the deepest spiritual levels of humanity. Uh, yeah. um, but now um, it's just kind of what I do and it, and who I am and. Um, it's all about action, really. I mean, it's um, I'm, I'm just kind of possessed with with creativity, and um, the farther I've gone in my spiritual practice, the the more that's come to light. You know, yeah. um, 
I thought, you know, initially when I sp started a spiritual way of life, I would be able to just fit in and, and be a plumber or the CEO of GM or something, you know, but, <laughs> but you know, I, I found that um, that wasn't the case. I wasn't really able to escape myself. It's just kind of, it's just kind of who I am, you know? Yeah. Um, and um, it's just developed that way over the years. I've, I've kind of obsessive in some ways, you know, I don't know if it's healthy or not. <laughs> <laughs> well, healthy or not, it just makes sure that you've got closets full of product, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, most people are familiar with you primarily from your music. Um, the people that um, are, have heard of you have heard of you in, in the context of being a singer-songwriter. Right. And you've been doing that for how long? Oh, probably 27 years, something like that, you know? Um writing songs and putting out records and i was a drummer before that for six years don't tell anyone i won't tell anyone um so um yeah i've been i've been doing that for a long time yeah and you got into singer in, into songwriting in particular kind of sideways yeah i started off as a drummer and um yeah. that great insecurity uh, it it started way before I started writing songs. So I never thought, you know, um, that I had much to say or, or um, I always thought people didn't really care what I had to say. Yeah. I, st I still don't know if they do or not. But, <laughs> <laughs> um, um, but um, I don't know. I just hit this point in my life. I met my wife and I had to, I had to knock down some walls and some barriers within myself to make that work. And when I did that, the result was uh, just the songs just started pouring out of me at a level that I couldn't really comprehend or understand. Yeah. Uh, so we were talking about your songwriting and um, you, you, re you, you released at least as far as you can remember, 14 albums, mm -hmm. had some success with uh, one song being placed in a Cameron Crowe film, mm -hmm. Sugar Blue. Yeah. And uh, somewhere along the line, um, you also started publishing books of poetry. Yeah, I, I, you know, as part of my writing process, I've always just done this kind of stream of consciousness stuff. And the first one was just all this stuff I'd had laying around for years. You know, it was just all this, all this poetry and this little prose stuff that I that I'd written over the years. It was just stacked in my closet, and I pulled it out one day and just said, well, I'll just throw it all in a book and call it this and write a little more and make, and make sense of it. Um, and then the same thing started happening over the last couple of years. Um, and don't ask me about the inspiration, but um, just, I started writing all the stream of consciousness stuff and it just, and um, usually I don't know what I have. And I sent it to my a friend of mine in uh, Brazil who's a writer and a filmmaker and she just flipped over it and said, Oh, you got to put this out. So, so I did, you know, now is this the friend who went on to make a video of one of your poems? Yeah. She's, she's just finishing it, it up right now. And it's, it's beautiful, you know, okay. shot in a rainforest in, in Brazil and, you know, uh, it's just gorgeous what she's done. So in 2016, you released a, a new collection of prose. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about that. Um, it's called The Seduction of Rada, and um, it's kind of um, stream of consciousness. Um, it kind of got inspired by um, uh, Sally Kempton's work on um, the Shakti goddesses. And uh, I started reading um, some of her work in relationship to how those, those Indian energy forms of those goddesses manifest themselves uh, in our life and how that looks and um and i really started to relate that relate um to some of that and recognizing how those energy forms manifested themselves in my life and in my relationships and um that's kind of the inspiration for the whole book um uh, with a little uh, quirky humor thrown in here and there. So. <laughs> Very good. Now, in addition to um, all of that, you also, you, you shot a music video in uh, 2016 as well. 
Yeah, we did it for the song called I Killed Myself Last Night on a record called My Moby Dick. And um, that was that was a lot of fun. We did it here in Colorado with a, a great video director called named Jeremy Johnson. Yeah. And, um, and uh, we did that as well. The the record album, uh, My Moby Dick, um, just has <laughs> it has one good song after another on it. And oh, thanks. I, I Killed Myself Last Night is a standout on that record. Um, and for some folks that uh, might wonder just how in the hell you came up with that morbid of a title. Uh, <laughs> is, there, uh, is there a little bit of a story behind it? Um, well, yeah, I've, I've spent the, you know, um, I've spent the last, I guess, 18 years kind of on a spiritual path um, in relationship to getting sober and, um, um, and jumping off into that cauldron of my own self will and stuff as we say. And, um, so, um, that's kind of what the song's about, you know, um, that getting rid of all that stuff that, um, that gets in the way of accessing our, um, our ability to access higher dimensions of ourselves. Yeah. And in the uh, video, that's portrayed very interestingly. Uh, I'm not going to give away the punchline, but we are going to have a link to the video. Um, oh, good. Uh, so that people can take a look at it. Uh, but just pretty amazing filmmaking and a wonderful song in, ad in addition to that. Um, it was fun. <laughs> I hope you do more. Yeah, I'm trying to get people not to make films and not think, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm, I deal with a couple filmmakers in my life and they're trained and, and they're wonderful and they, their attention to detail is just fantastic. Um, and I'm trying to get them to just turn on their iPhone and walk down the street and you have everything you need right there and just see what happens, you know. So, but it's hard for them, I, know, I understand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard for me sometimes too. Yeah. yeah. I was also curious um about your recovery story. Mm -hmm. At some point in your life you you just found that you um were kind of reaching the bottom and um decided that you need to come up. And tell us a little bit about that time and uh, what led you to recovery. Well, I was just, I was always kind of a pile driver. I had this, I just had this great desire for success and to validate myself with my success um, because I was really never validated growing up in a lot of different ways. Um, so I used kind of success and um, songwriting and my artist career as kind of this measure. And um, at some point we all figure out we're, we're not in control of the results. You know, we try and try and try and, and still we can't, you know, cram the world into the little box we want. We think um, it needs to be in. And, um, and that was kind of the beginning of my bottom, you know? Um, and um, the harder I seem to try to, to uh, control the outcome, the, the more elusive it seemed. And, um, and the fuel for that was drinking, you know, um, so that was my drug of choice and I drank and drank and drank and, and, um, and then all of a sudden it, it slowly just stopped working. So I was left with this giant cauldron of shit that I'd accumulated in myself. And, um, and that's kind of when my, um, recovery started. I mean, I, I didn't choose it. It kind of chose me. And so, yeah. um, and I was lucky that it stopped working and, I just got dropped off at this at this place, um, which at the time seemed terrible, but it really it was the best place I could have. In hindsight, it was the best thing that could have ever happened to me, really. The first years that you were in recovery, um, were you doing like 12-step yeah. programs? Okay. I pretty much went into um, you know that traditional 12-step world and um, and I've been there, you know, in some form or fashion ever since. Um, but, um, and it kept me sober. Um, 
But then at some point I discovered yoga and that really took my recovery and my, um, and the recognition of my, um, my conditioning to a whole new level. How were you introduced to yoga? It, you know, when the, when the student's ready, the teacher shows up, and that, and that was the case for me. You know, I was sitting at a stop sign on my way to a meeting one time in Nashville, Tennessee, and I just had this epiphany, you know, that I needed to go deeper in my spiritual life, or I wasn't going to make it, you know. Um, I, I remember sitting there, I turned off the car, and I had this feeling of, like, I really got to do something. And then I went, went in at that very same meeting. My friend came up to me, and he's like, man, I met this dude and, um, he's a yogi and you got to come here and talk, you know, he's just incredible. And I was like, well, whatever. (laughs) I was very, I was very suspicious, you know, and, um, but he talked me into going to the talk and, um, this guy walked in the room and he started talking and it was like, I was hearing what I'd been waiting to hear my entire life. You know, And um, I signed up for the, his program that very night, and uh, which started the following week. And, and uh, I had this really profound experience, and that was the kind of my introduction to yoga. And how long, how long ago was that? That was probably 2001, okay. um, so 15 years ago. 16 now, man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. <laughs> I was never good at math. Yeah, <laughs> So what's the biggest difference that you've seen in your own recovery path that uh, you could directly point at yoga as being the cause of it? Um, probably my, my, uh, the ability through the practice uh, to access a dimension of myself that really is beyond my mind and my body. Uh, access a spiritual dimension of myself um, where, you know, that's outside of where the, the disease or the addiction um, sets up shop and controls the situation. Okay. Um, and um, it's beyond like, you know, um, conditioning or, or character defect identification. Um, and I don't think I really would have been able to access that dimension of myself without the practice of yoga. Hmm. And, you know, in the 12 step programs, they talk about sharing your experience, strength and hope. Mm -hmm. And in 2016, you came up with a couple of very tangible ways of doing that. Um, Let's talk a little bit first about um, recovery yoga or recover.yoga is the website. Um, Tell us a little bit about your vision for that and how it came about and where it's going. Well, basically it's, it's, just taken from my own experience and what worked for me, you know, I'd go, I'd, I'd go into the yoga or the, or the rooms or the Buddhist Sangha. And, um, and I didn't, and they, they just kind of left me off off at the door. You know, they'd give me all these practices that opened up these dimensions, those dimensions of myself where all this, all my crap would come up and then they'd kind of just leave you at the door. Um, the traditional re- recovery programs. So I go back to um, my recovery programs, um, and they actually had tools to deal with those with those um, those things as they came up. Um, and then I tried to then I tried to do my traditional recovery program without the yoga, and that didn't work either. You know, mm-hmm. so. Um, in that, in that process, there's a lot of character, you know, defect or conditioning identification. And I see a lot of people just spinning around in, in that. Oh, and they never, they never access the dimension of, of themselves that enables them to step outside of, the, of that or experience themselves outside of that conditioning. So the two, for me, just worked amazing together. You know, you have these practices and... Um, so, and then, and then you actually have some, through the, my traditional recovery program, I had something to do with them. So 
I've just developed this program that that kind of incorporates the two um, in relationship to my own experience and how that worked for me. Okay. And out of that program, what services are you offering? Um, I'm doing, you know, private recovery coaching. I'm doing um, private yoga um, instruction. I'm setting people up with practices of their own um, based on where they are in their recovery process. Um, and I'm doing, um, I'm developing workshops and I'm developing an online course as well for people that I really can't spend time with because people started coming into my life and, and they were living in Seattle or Washington or, or the Netherlands or, and I was like, wow, I can't spend any time with these people. So how am I, what can I do to really, um, introduce, you know, this experience to them. And so I'm de developing, putting it all in an online course as well. That's great. That's a lot. That's a lot, yeah. <laughs> and over the last couple of months, you've just like sewn this whole thing together. And well, yeah, it's been very serendipitous. And, it, and I know I'm doing the right thing because it's kind of a part of my own path too. You know, these things fall into your life and, and into your awareness and they just come together in a certain way that you could have never really planned for yourself. And, um, so it's, it's very much a part of my living practice as well. Yeah. Last spring after you helped me, uh, co-facilitate a workshop called making your own way. Um, you came out of that workshop and you were just on fire about this 365 days of recovery yoga book. Can you tell people a little bit about that? You finished that book in, in what, six weeks? Yeah, it was pretty fast. I mean, you know, I've basically been studying yoga and recovery for the past 18 years. So um, basically, it was kind of, it's kind of a stream of consciousness book, a daily reader based on kind of my own experience with integrating yoga and traditional recovery practices. Um, so... It came about pretty fast and that's always a good sign, you know? Um, yeah. So uh, it was kind of meant to be. Um, in looking at the book, each one of the days of the year has um, basically a, a thought or uh, an encouragement or um, just a truth about recovery and how yoga can support it. And then you've got space also for people if they were so inclined to journal. Mm -hmm. And so this would be a great tool for anyone who is learning the process of recovery yoga uh, to integrate that into their daily life. I think um, the, the, the two things support each other beautifully. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, you're getting ready it, for folks that live in northern Colorado. You're getting ready to do a live workshop in uh, just a couple of weeks here, January 28th. Yeah. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about that? Um, it's going to be at uh, the Unity Church here in Fort Collins, and um, um, it's just a, a day, a day long workshop. Um, you'll come out, you'll come out with um, a slew of homework that you can do, um, self inquiry work, and um, the plan is to set everybody up with a daily home practice um, that they can incorporate at home and make a commitment to, and uh, that balances and opens the system enable enabling um you to access um, deeper dimensions of yourself and deeper dimensions of consciousness um sometimes that's good sometimes that's uncomfortable but um it's i think it's necessary in the recovery world it's a yeah i think it's huge and especially to have the in-person support um yeah is helpful especially when you're learning something new yeah. Um, the tradition of yoga that, that this program is emerging from is Kriya Yoga. Um, mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, Yoga Kriya basically is a series of, of asanas uh, or um, uh, pranayamas that are put together in a certain way to balance the system in a certain way and open the system and um, um, create the environment for something deeper to open up and happen, create a deeper possibility. Mm -hmm. In your own life, how, how have you seen that manifest? Um, well, it never really manifests how you think it's going to manifest, but, <laughs> or it, as pleasantly as it might manifest, but, um, you know, 
and we all come to the table with different um, our own baggage you know um, we're our own unique sack of karma you know yeah. and uh so the results of the practices for me were sometimes you know really hard um i got into this deal because and started doing it because they told me oh it would make me happy and blissful and but there was, there was a lot of stuff I had to go through before I got there, you know, uh, a lot of stuff I really had to work through. And basically the practices, all they did was open myself up to reveal them, to reveal um, in my own condition. Sometimes that's just very uncomfortable. Um, so, um, but uh, I kept going with them for some reason. Yeah. You know. So we're, we're going to go ahead and end our chat there, but I do want to have people be um, aware of your websites. You've got a couple that, you know, are, are related to different activities in your life. Um, Jefffinland.com. Is that correct? Yeah. That is yeah. for your music and your prose and other, um, on occasion you actually write a blog post. Occasionally, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when you have something to say. Right. Um, so that's jefffinland.com for that information. And the information for recovery yoga is recover.yoga. Um, and also uh, include a link for the event, right, for people in northern Colorado who are interested in the recovery yoga uh, workshop coming up at the end of January. Um, and I appreciate your willingness to be my first guest. Thanks, man. It's it's nothing new for me. I'm used to being a, on the chopping block. So thank you for having me. This program is a production of MakeYourOwnWayMedia.com. If you'd like to know more about what I'm up to, please visit FranklinTaggart.com. I appreciate the time you've spent with me today, and I'd love to connect again. Until then, show up. Pay attention and participate. You've got this. So how many albums have you released now? Oh, I don't even know. Maybe 14 or something like that. There's, there's Rover. <laughs> <laughs> Vinny, I'm going to let him finish barking and edit this section out. Four pounds of world domination. <laughs> <laughs> it's the UPS guy. Yeah. He's toast. <laughs>